You all have responded to my last few videos with a multitude of technical 3D printing questions. So today, I'm going to cover many of those questions as well as try to get in front of any future questions that may come up. Hello slotheads, young and old, near and far, experienced and beginner. Before we really get started, I just wanted to be clear that I am by no stretch of the imagination an expert when it comes to 3D printing. I have made many mistakes, and I am sure I will make many more. However, I think that some of the things that I've learned could help some of you trying to follow along with any of the last few projects, as well as any projects in the future. The main topics we'll cover today are slicer software, building a project, basic 3D printing tips, and example print from start to finish. In the end, I'll point you to a few other resources for your reference. Now I have used several different slicers over the past five or six years, and one of the only things I can guarantee is that they all have benefits and they all have shortcomings. However, I have found that Orca Slicer has had the fewest shortcomings and works well with just about every manufacturer and model of printer. The primary benefits for using Orca Slicer for our purposes are the ability to create projects and within those projects, load several build plates at a time. Having this ability allows us to better plan out the parts needed for a project, as well as make sure we are making the best use of printer time. There are many videos posted all over YouTube that do a much better job than I could ever do explaining the benefits of Orca Slicer. So I'll leave it up to them. If you want to get started learning more about the software, check out some of the video links in the description. Building a full project out in the slicer has helped me keep track of what parts I have printed already and what is up next in the queue. When printing a multi-part model, it is very easy to separate out parts by color and place them each on a different build plate. You can further separate parts by size and squeeze as many as you can on a build plate. Separating the model in this way makes it very straightforward to keep track of what needs to be printed next and if a filament change is necessary. Once the project is all laid out in the software, it's possible to save settings per project, per build plate, or even per part. This allows for tricky manipulation of the settings on wildly different part sizes and shapes. You can specify just about every setting, but the ones I use most often are infill pattern and percentage, wall count, and the number of top and bottom layers. Now all of the hard work of organizing parts and tweaking settings can be saved to the project and will automatically be applied when you open the project in the future to print another version of the same model. Think several of the same building, or many crash walls, or even track borders. I just want to talk for a minute about the most basic 3D printing tips that I've come across over the years. Obviously, these will barely scratch the surface, and I will cover more comprehensive resources at the end of the video. But these should get you pointed in the right direction. Seams are created every time that the nozzle starts and stops extruding filament. Knowing where and when to worry about seam placement can save you a lot of trouble and headache. Before we figure out what to do with them, it's important to know how to locate them in the slicer software. And although each slicer software is a little bit different, most use the same method to represent them on the screen. And that method is typically highlighting them with white dots. On most prints, it doesn't really matter where the seams are placed on the model, other than if they aren't all in the same place or hidden, then they can be a bit of an eyesore, but not the end of the world. However, on some prints, such as the walls I showed a few weeks ago, the placement is critical. These seams not only represent where the nozzle starts and stops, but they can also indicate the overall strength of a print. For example, if we were printing the crash walls from a few weeks ago and all of the seams lined up on the thin parts of the model that are designed to flex, then instead of flexing and curving to your track, they will most likely split and fall apart. Having seams at those critical strength points indicates that slicer software is actually telling your printer to create many separate parts printed close together rather than one big part with thin walls. Fortunately, Orca Slicer does a wonderful job of placing these seams in appropriate places, 90% of the time. A few other slicers do not behave nearly as well, so just take my word for it that learning Orca has many benefits, but this one alone will save you loads of headaches. When you're placing items on your build plate, the orientation of the part is more important than you might think. In fact, 
it can be one of the most important decisions you make when planning out a print. There are three things to keep in mind when thinking about part orientation. Build plate texture, build plate size, part similarity, and part strength. I will go more into part strength in a bit, but for now, let's start with the build plate. There are many types of build plates available for just about every printer in existence, and each type has a different surface texture. This texture can be used to our advantage when considering how the finished part will look. For example, if you have a textured PEI plate or a glass plate, and you want to hide the fact that the part is 3D printed, you can do so by placing the cosmetic side of the part down on the build plate. This will create either a glass smooth finish or a roughly textured surface, depending on your plate. Either way, this method is a great way to hide layer lines with very minimal effort. Build plate size is something that every 3D printer struggles with at some point, no matter how big or small yours is. When placing your parts on the build plate, just be sure to orient them in such a way that they'll fit on the plate. Simple as that. Now when printing several of the same part, it is important to orient them all the same basic direction. Layer lines, seams, top and bottom layer patterns, and infill patterns are all affected by the orientation on the plate if you have two of the same part. Just make sure they're pointing in the same direction on the plate and all of those patterns will match up. I have found that layer lines are the biggest contributor to part strength or weakness. No matter how well you tune your printer, it's the point of contact between the two layers that is always going to be one of the weakest points of your print. But there are two things to consider that will help manage these weak points and keep them at bay. Just keep in mind that stress perpendicular to the layer lines can cause them to separate and or break. But stress parallel to the layer lines can handle a much larger force. Print speed can be one of the toughest things to manage no matter how long you've been printing. It is always tempting to do everything possible to trim the print time as much as possible. But I would advise against it. Print as fast as your printer can handle, but slow enough to get it right the first time. Repeat to yourself when you're planning it out, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. If the part takes a long time to print, but it comes off the bed perfect the first time, that is way better than cutting a few minutes off of the print time, but having to try several attempts to get it right. Now color is the easiest tip in this list, but probably one that will cause the most comments down below. Heads up to everyone, this is strictly my opinion, and I have been happy with these results. Now while you can prime and sand and paint finished models, it is much easier to print the dang thing in the color that I want it to be from the get-go. I've picked a color scheme for my track of red, white, gray, and black. I make sure that I always have those colors in stock and plan out my prints to primarily use those four colors. The main reason I use this method is that once the model is done printing, I just glue it up and add it to the track. I know some folks love painting scenery, but I am not one of them. Now in order to briefly show all the tips and tricks that I've shared today, I'm going to quickly show you them in practice with one of the grandstands that I need to print for my layout. Now first, I create a new project in the Slicer software and name it something that will allow me to quickly identify what model is saved within the project. Then, I add one of each unique part to the project, not worrying about where it is placed on the screen. Once all of the parts are loaded, I use the clone feature to duplicate any parts that I need multiples of. In this case, I need multiple seats and multiple seat bases. Now that I have all the parts ready to go, I divide them up by what the final colors will be. Once this has been done, and I know how many colors I'm using, and roughly how many build plates I'll need, I start to add them to the new plates. For each new plate I create, I change the name of it to a brief description of what the parts are. When adding parts to the plates, you'll sometimes need to make multiple plates for the same color. This is fine. Just make sure that you add all of one color to plates before you move on to the next color. This will help in the next step, when we print each plate one at a time. Now work your way through the plates completing each plate of a color before moving on. Once you finish with one color, you can change the filament and print the next set of colors. Once they all have been printed, 
glue them together, and add them to the track. Now I hope this information was in some way helpful to at least some of you out there. I'm currently working on creating a playlist on the channel for any great YouTube videos that I come across that I think could help supplement and expand on what I explained today. Look for the link to that playlist at the end of this video. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you next time.